of Einstein's cosmological constant. Einstein's misbegotten child is nothing but the energy content of the fluctuating quantum vacuum. In deciding to eliminate the cosmological constant from his equations, Einstein was in effect claiming that there was really no vacuum energy. But from a modern perspective, a modern perspective, mind you, Einstein did this in 1930s, but our modern perspective now, we have every reason to believe that the quantum jitters inevitably give rise to energy in empty space. That is, even at zero, at absolute zero temperature, on the super small scale of subatomic particles of the underlying vacuum field, there is still movement. It cannot be absolutely still. There is such a thing as called, they dub it, the quantum jitters. Every kind of elementary particle is present in the violently fluctuating sea of virtual particles called the vacuum. There's irony for you, isn't it? Usually we think of a vacuum as completely empty. It's absolutely infinitely full. In this sea are electrons, positrons, photons, quarks, neutrinos, gravitons, and many more. The energy of the vacuum is the sum total of the energies of all of these virtual particles, and each type of particle makes its contribution. Some of the particles are moving slowly and have small energy. Some are moving speedily and have higher energy. If we add up the energy in this sea of particles using the technical mathematics of quantum field theory, we find a disaster. There are so many high-energy virtual particles that the total energy comes out infinite. Infinity is a senseless answer. It's what made Dirac skeptical of vacuum energy. But as Dirac's contemporary Wolfgang Pauli quipped, just because something is infinite doesn't mean it's zero. That's very interesting. So what they do is they readjust, they renormalize, and they take out the infinities, and then they come up with the uh, with the proper mathematical answer. <laughs> if it doesn't work, change it, huh? Yeah, I don't know about that. Well, page 164. I'm just highlighting some of the ideas from Susskind. The vacuum energy is a property of empty space. When empty space expands, it's still just empty space. And the energy density is exactly what it was originally. No matter how many times you double the size of the universe, the vacuum energy density stays the same and its repulsive effect never diminishes. Now, in light of what he said here, I would propose the DNC 88. There is something out there that is causing life, that is a law. In our case, we understand that it makes our universe expand, grow, an ever-creative creation. DNC 88 says, it's in and through and by all things the law by which all things exist. This is why I invoke section 88. Now cosmology, based on the quantum zero field, as Irvin Laszlo discusses, there is something throughout all of existence as an underlying stratum. Now the DNC calls it the light of Christ, the... the uh, the light that shines, the light of truth, and this truth also shines. And this is in and through all things. This is why I invoked d 88, is to show you that maybe perhaps there's something more to this than meets the eye. I'm not saying this argues for quantum theology or quantum theory at all. I'm just saying we have to keep an open mind and read the revelations as well as study the science as well as study the religion. Something taboo to some orthodox scientists from our Western view, and uh, so what? I've got other quantum physicists and scientists who say we're misunderstanding something, we're missing something because we leave something out, namely consciousness, our mind. Now, the remarkable thing about Irvin Laszlo, I read Laszlo before I read Susskind. 
Now that I have read Suskind, I can see that Irvin Laszlo is building upon Suskind's cosmological idea. That's a remarkable thing. Laszlo. Who's this Laszlo character? Let me read the... uh, blurb on the back. At the age of nine, he was recognized as a child prodigy on the piano, and by age 15, was performing throughout the world. He is the holder of the highest degree of the Sorbonne, and the recipient of four honorary PhDs and numerous awards, including the 2001 Goy Award, this is the Japan Peace Prize, the 2005 Mandir of Peace Prize, and nominations for the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004 and 2005. He is a former professor of philosophy, systems theory, and futures studies, and founder and president of the international think tank, the Club of Budapest. He is the author of 74 books that have been translated into 20 languages. Uh, the man is a walking prodigy. <laughs> Thank goodness he's still around and writing. Based upon Suskind's cosmology, let me read from his uh, 2004 text, Science and the Akashic Field, an Integral Theory of Everything. This is by Inner Traditions. Starting on page 33, he notes, The remarkable fact emerging from this sea of quantum mystery is that particles and atoms are not individual beasts. They are sociable entities, and under certain conditions they are so thoroughly entangled with each other that they are not just here or there, but in all pertinent places at the same time. Their non-locality respects neither time nor space. It exists whether the distances that separate the particles and the atoms is measured in millimeters or in light years, and whether the time that separates them consists of seconds or of millions of years. Could the non-locality of the most basic elements of the universe be due to a fundamental field that records the state of particles and atoms and conveys this information to particles and atoms in corresponding states? Could it be that an Akashic field is active not only at the cosmological scale, but also at the ultra-small scale of physical reality? He's bringing in the ancient concept of the Akashic Record, and he's calling it the Akashic Field. The Akashic Record, of course, is the grand memory of all that has ever gone before in the universe, according to the ancient Eastern thought. This field, we Westerns, according to Laszlo, would call the quantum vacuum. Remarkable. On page 46, there's not only matter and energy in the universe, but also a more subtle yet real element information. And this is information in the form of active and effective information. Information of this kind connects all things in space and time. Indeed, it connects all things through space and time. As a number of cutting-edge scientists, among them Nikola Tesla, then David Bohm, and more recently Harold Puthoff, surmised interactions in the domains of nature as well as of mind are mediated by a fundamental information field at the heart of the universe. This is why I invoke D&C Section 88. This information, this law, this Whatever it is, this thing we call the light of Christ is in and through all things, and it giveth life, and it is the law. Now, apparently, the cosmologists and quantum physicists are coming around to saying there is something fundamental, and it's called information. Well, Nikola Tesla, the father of modern communications technology, spoke of an original medium that fills space and compared it to Akasha, the light-carrying ether. In his unpublished 1907 paper, Man's Greatest Achievement, he wrote that this original medium, a kind of force field, becomes matter when prana, cosmic energy, acts on it, and when the action ceases, matter vanishes and returns to Akasha. Since this medium fills all of space, everything that takes place in space can be referred to it. In the quantum vacuum is understood